lovely, lovely imps, it's time at long last for me to do a review of Star Wars. It's been a, a like what, like a week and a half or so since I did one of my uh, Bazinga Star Wars reviews. It's been just a little bit. Um, and we have to talk about Star Wars because, um, as you all know, I'm still in the Star Wars arc, and tomorrow, Star Wars Jedi Survivor comes out, which I'm going to be playing at the moment that it launches, which is going to be tonight at midnight, so I'll probably be up too late playing Star Wars Jedi Survivor tonight. However, um, I watched the sequel trilogy. Well, actually, I watched two of the movies out of the sequel trilogy, and it's time for me to talk about Star Wars, The Force Awakens. That's right, Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Now, Star Wars, The Force Awakens was a controversial movie um, when it first, when it first came out. And I don't know that it's really stopped being controversial. And the reason why I, I, I put the, the little quotes around it is because the controversies around The Force Awakens are kind of, um, they're kind of iconic uh, for, for this era of, of politically, politically charged media commentary, right? Um, I don't know if there was another movie before The Force Awakened uh, in like our in like a, a pop culture movie that produced such a like clearly uh, 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 politically deviated line of controversy. And what I'm trying to say here is that a bunch of conservatives got insanely triggered about The Force Awakens. Because, in fact, it basically started this era of go woke, go broke. It started the, the obsession with wokeness, quote unquote, in, uh, in, in pop culture. A bunch of these fucking uh, grifter weirdo conservatives who freak out every time there's a woman or a black person in a movie got their start making... Um, uh, extremely weird reactionary statements about The Force Awakens. Uncle Gumball says, I don't know if they were quite there. It might have been more for Last Jedi. Oh, no, 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 no. I remember at the time this movie released, at the time The Force Awakens released, there was this uh, really short trailer that uh, Disney released where it was like a shot of what appeared to be Tatooine, which we now know, of course, is the uh, equally desert-like planet Jakku. And it's just like a shot. And it's like, da -da, boo -da -da -da. you know, your little like Star Wars, the little plucked strings. And then, uh, and then Finn, who, if you're not familiar with the, if you've been living under a rock, Finn's character, well, Finn is a black guy. He's played by a black guy. Um, his face shows up on the screen and he's like breathing really heavily and he's all sweaty and he's in a stormtrooper thing, but his helmet's been ripped off. So there's a black guy as a stormtrooper, okay? And they lost their fucking minds at that. That was it. It was a little teaser trailer. Um, and it immediately made these conservatives start like actually losing their minds. Um, Killjoy says, remember that the tra that trailer actually broke Google servers and YouTubes. There were so many people clamoring to react to it. Now, to be fair, the vast, vast majority of people reacting to this were not being weird and racist. However, there was a loud and shockingly large for what it is contingent of people who were super mad about it. Just that. They were just mad that there was a black stormtrooper. That's it. Um, but then, of course, it got even worse when more trailers came out and it showed that the main character was going to be <gasps> a woman. <gasps> Oh no, and there were there was even worse. What got even more shocking for these these weird backwards people was that there were trailer shots of the woman white woman main character flirting 
or presumably flirting with the black guy uh, co-lead. And they really didn't like that, okay? So you guys have to understand that the windup before the, the Force Awakens even came out, things were getting very, very weird, okay? So they're just racist. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, it was a weird cultural moment. And uh, there was a ton of expectations, like, and hype, obviously, because it's Star Wars. Everybody soys over Star Wars. There's a reason that I go, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Bazinga. Bazinga, and people say soy wars and all that stuff. Obviously, there is a lot of, uh, it is like the quintessential uh, fan, fan obsession. Uh, Star Wars has like, and it deserves it, by the way, a reputation for having the most insufferable fans uh, you can possibly imagine. So there was a ton of expectations around the film in basically every single direction, um, including that there was an entire uh, like niche of online content creators who were trying to lay down that this was gonna be the most woke, uh, liberal propaganda film that you could possibly imagine. Um, and guys, I'm here to tell you now, it, it actually wasn't. Like, it wasn't at all. It, it wasn't even a little bit. Like, it was, it was like basically, there was basically nothing. There was basically nothing woke about it at all. The most woke thing that happens is that there's a, like, a line or two, maybe two lines, uh, in which, um, basically, the main character, Ray, uh, she's like, she just is able to fight on her own. So like someone was going to rescue her, but then she beats up the person. And it's like the most minor thing you can possibly imagine. There's, there's like essentially, there was basically no wokeness. Despite the fact that all of these people were screaming and freaking out about it, there was nothing. Um, one of the things that people said over and over and over again when The Force Awakens launched was uh, that, that Rey was a Mary Sue. And um, let me just, can I, can we just, just take a moment and think about which series we're talking about? Star Wars. Um, of all of the series to try and complain about someone being a Mary Sue, which I'll explain in a minute, Star Wars is really a really funny one to make that your main complaint. People are still mad about that to this day. If I look up uh, like Rey Skywalker or whatever, I don't remember. I think that's what she, the name she chooses later on. If I look up Rey, um, and you're and and you look up the word Ray Mary Sue. You're gonna find tons of videos even being made to this day about it. It's very silly. Um, for for those who are unfamiliar with the term Mary Sue, a Mary Sue is a term uh for a character that is basically a self insert, uh, a, a, a like a like a self insert that is way way too powerful and uh just kind of wins without any effort. Uh, a Mary Sue is like a, it's like a character where you're like, uh, it's, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a trope that is associated with childish writing. So it's like, uh, oh no, the bad guy captured insert main character here and he's got you in a, uh, in a, in a, in a torture chamber and, and the laser is getting close and you're about to die, but then they throw a, 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 a quarter and with perfect precision and it knocks the laser away. It cuts open their, their, uh, you know, their, their bindings and then they jump and do a triple backflip and they, they, you know, grab a gun and they shoot everybody in the room instantly and then the day is saved. It's like the idea is that like a Mary Sue is like a character that doesn't earn, that doesn't earn their power and that has a diminished arc as a result of just being like an overpowered self insert, basically. Um, 
and uh, and has no major flaws. And Star Wars, I don't, I don't know if Star Wars like the classic Gary Stu characters, Odysseus and Perseus. Okay, <laughs> true, true. Okay, um, it's kind of uh, it's kind of a funny one because of course there are characters that are like that all the time. Um, but but the thing is is that uh, it's really it's a really hard it's a hard one to quantify because there's lots of characters that if you were really uncharitable you could like like we have here Odysseus and Perseus that you could you could argue are are like fill that where their their flaws are so minor that it doesn't really matter that much it's it's not a very good critique is what I'm trying to say here. But also, this is Star Wars, okay? This is Star Wars where um, Yoda exists, okay? Yoda is a 900-year-old green guy who can pick up buildings with his mind, do triple backflips, and and defeat entire armies of enemies without even without any problems. The Star Wars universe up to this point is not exactly one that's known for having realistic character arcs, okay? You could basically only argue that Luke's character arc is really one of the few that has like, where he, he definitely has flaws and he has a pretty, you know, he has a pretty solid arc from the first movie to the third movie. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a story about space wizards. And yes, um, since I'm reviewing this, I will say there are certain moments that f if you are, if you forget that you're watching a Star Wars movie, it does kind of feel a little bit like weird and silly. Uh, there's a part in the movie, uh, that lots of people cite, uh, where Ray basically just with no training whatsoever, uh, no like particular understanding of the force at all perfectly mind controls a uh, a imperial soldier like she just is like let me out of the cage and and go away and it just works and um, I can understand why people think that that was like a little bit of a cheap thing but on a counter note uh, uh, the end of this film has a lightsaber battle in which extreme pains are taken to show that Rey is untrained. So uh, I don't actually think that the Mary Sue allegations, which were very popular, even among people who weren't uh, anti-woke weirdos, um, I just think it's, it's kind of unfair in some ways. Uh, let's, let's, let's get to the movie itself. I've been kind of talking about the atmosphere around it. I've been talking about aspects of the movie. Um, The Force Awakens is this, it, it's basically like if somebody took A New Hope and put it in, uh, uh, in a, in a little like Yahtzee dice shaker and went, chick, 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 and then whoosh. There's basically nothing really new introduced uh, in The Force Awakens that wasn't already uh, present in A New Hope. T to a shocking degree, the movies follow a very, very similar arc. Um, and they have, but like the, 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 there's all these elements that are basically uh, the, the same, but in a slightly different order. Even to the degree that the, the, there's a doom weapon that's threatening the galaxy, just like the Death Star in in A New Hope, and but this time it's five times stronger and way bigger. There's actually a really funny scene in The Force Awakens that made me laugh out loud, where uh, a character they lampshade the fact that they're doing that they're doing it again. Um, a character goes, "Well, isn't this just like the Death Star? We took care of that back in the day." And then they go, no, this isn't the Death Star. Look at this. And the character takes a remote control and presses a button and a hologram has a Death Star on it. And then the Death Star gets really tiny. And then the, the new super weapon shows up and you see tiny Death Star, big new super weapon. And it's just like, 
<laughs> it's so they I can't I couldn't believe it. It actually made me laugh out loud that they were willing to lampshade it so obviously. Like it's just like, no, it's way bigger, guys. Uh it's called Star Killer Base, yeah. Um it's kind of funny. Um and and uh so the Force Awakens exists in this this it never escapes the shadow of the movies that came before it. And, uh... <sighs> However, the movie looks really good. Like, most of the movie looks absolutely fantastic. The costume designs are awesome. The ship designs are really cool. The locations, for the most part, with a handful of exceptions, do look really great. And I have to give a lot of credit to the fact that they actually used uh, puppets for a lot of the aliens and creatures, which is awesome. Like, I again, I'm not a CGI, uh, like an anti-CGI purist or anything like that, but there is something charming um, and artistically uh, refreshing of people actually taking the time to build costumes. I think part of it is just that, like, you see so much cheap CGI um, that it's nice to see people go out of their way to take the time to make a puppet, something physical, look nice. I talked about this a lot with my prequels reviews, which was um, that there was a problem in the prequels that like it always felt like the characters weren't actually in a place. And that problem, at least for most of the movie, is resolved in The Force Awakens. Um, and I like that. Um, uh, in, in the original trilogy of Star Wars, uh, all of the characters always feel like they're living in the space, like they are actually in the place that they're in physically. And in the prequels, it's like the opposite. All of the characters feel like they're wearing a VR headset and they're not actually in the place that they're in because they aren't. They're in like a green screen box. Uh, uh, acting, uh, like trying to react to like a tennis ball on a stick uh, so that it can be CGI'd in. Um, but in The Force Awakens, you get a little bit of that original trilogy charm back because the characters are actually in sets, the characters are actually engaging with physical puppets, and it shows. And I really like that. Um, however, I've been pretty positive so far about The Force Awakens. And it's time for me to be a little bit negative, okay? Because my God, is there some big problems with The Force Awakens that we haven't discussed yet. So the first one is the politics. The politics of The Force Awakens is completely and completely and utterly nonsensical. There is, it's actually so politically empty that uh, that it's almost offensive. Uh, the even even the original trilogy had some depth of politics to it. It was very explicitly a story about rebels fighting against an overbearing imperial force. It tr it always very explicitly frames the rebels as a good as the good guys, even when they're engaging in acts that the uh, that like polite society would dis would would say are bad. Um, like, I mean, there's parts where it's basically just like, I mean, the original Star Wars trilogy is like, aren't the rebels a bunch of terrorists? And it's like, yes. And it's just like, okay. Um, but The Force Awakens has no politics. It, it's politics is the politics of we want your money. Um, and it shows like at every single angle. There is, they have a, the, the, one of the main characters, Finn, is a a uh, uh, um, a stormtrooper who has defected, and they spend basically no time actually exploring his defection. Defecting from the Empire is like that. If that was if that was in the prequels, by the way, like not to be a George Lucas stand for a second, 
But if that if that storyline had been in the prequels, it would have been half the movie would have been them talking about why he chose to defect. Long, boring dialogue inside of like a ship uh, talking about why he chose to be a defector from the Empire. And there was just basically nothing. He's like, I saw some bad shit and I didn't like it. And then they just drop it. They sold out Finn so hard. And uh, 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 Finn, who's played by John Boyega, I think I'm saying his name right. Uh, yeah, John Boyega. Okay, I just need to make sure I was saying his name right. Um, John Boyega absolutely nails absolutely fucking nails the role. I, in fact, I think that Finn might be my favorite character in the entire new series. Finn's, like, like John Boyega is such a passionate actor, and it shows he's, he's hilarious, his delivery is great, he's passionate about the role, uh, he nails it absolutely nails it and they totally give him they give him nothing in the script to work with they give him no depth they basically just drop his storyline and his arc the moment that it starts and it's really really unfortunate and there's a whole lot more that goes on with this as well like for example um another thing that's very weird about the force awakens is the fact that um so in the storyline of The Force Awakens, the Republic is like, is, is, it's back. They brought back the Republic. Um, and in the original Star Wars, they don't actually spend much time talking about like what the goal of, of the Rebels is because the Rebels are framed very explicitly as like a, like a large alliance of people who all have, you know, different backgrounds and different motivations. Um, and of course, in my favorite Star Wars show of all time, Star Wars Andor, uh, they really go in on that. The, in Star Wars Andor, they explore the idea that the rebellion is made up of very diverse people with different ideas about the future and different histories to like an unbelievable degree. That's like arguably the entire show of Andor, um, in a, in a, in a nutshell. Um, but, uh, uh. It, in this movie, the Republic is just back. They're just like, oh, the Republic's back. And in fact, not only is the Republic back, but they actually, wait, do, do they keep the capital the same? Um, maybe I'm wrong. No, they don't. Oh yeah, they change it to Hosnian Prime or something, right? Is that the one? Hosnian, Hosnian Prime, okay. Um, but you never go there. You never see it. There's nothing ever explained about it. There is literally no, you learn nothing about how the Republic operates, except um, it gets blown up at the end. So it's like introduced only to be immediately blown up. And also um, they never explore how the first order came to be. The first order is just, um, they're just Imperial holdouts but they never explain like, okay, so how does that work? Um, the empire didn't just like, the em the empire uh, starts to fall apart, obviously be at the end of Return of the Jedi. Um, and instead of deciding to like go into that, instead of exploring what would happen if a galactic empire suddenly had its head cut off. Because of course, you'll all remember that at the end of Return of the Jedi, the Emperor himself gets murked. He's just dead. The most powerful guy in the entire galaxy, gone. And they just don't do it. They're just like, the Republic's here, and there's still stormtroopers, but they're all hanging out on this one planet, basically. It's very lazy, it's very sloppy, and it sucks. Um... I, 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 I don't know. It's, it's shocking. There's basically just no attempts to delve into the politics of the universe, which is the, you know, arguably one of the most interesting parts of Star Wars. Um, yeah. And also it's really weird because the, the Republic has apparently has an army and has a fleet, 
but then they also created a a like non-governmental army which is called the resistance and it's led by leia and leia's like no i i have like so she's basically like a private military of some sort but that's also never explained or explored at all. They just are kind of like, yeah, um, Leia has a standing army of of like massive size and power and is just cruising around the galaxy, like doing whatever she wants and fighting the Empire or the First Order. It's very sloppy. Um, I do like, I, I don't mind Leia, but but it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. General Leia broke off on her own to form the Resistance. Yeah, um, but they never explore any of that. They just kind of say that it happened. That's like basically everything. They just kind of say that things happened. Uh, very weird. Um, so, uh, um, oh yeah, okay. So then that brings us to the second huge problem that I have with The Force Awakens, which is the soy factor. <sighs> Oh boy. Oh my god. Um it so the movie starts off trying to basically be like uh oh yeah, this is the next generation. I mean, they literally there's a line in the movie where it's like um where it's like, "Oh, you all are the new you're the new I don't remember what the exact line is, but it's basically like you're the hope for the galaxy now." And yet about 40 minutes or so into the movie, they introduced Han Solo, Leia, they make a reference to Luke, and they have Chewbacca, and they have R2-D2, and they have C-3PO. And the moment that they introduce all of the old cast members, the film takes like a serious downturn. Um, like really bad. So like the movie is supposed to be about a new generation of heroes. But everything, and I mean everything in the film, is actually about the old heroes. They're looking for Luke. From the very beginning, the whole thing is about trying to find Luke. They're trying to find Luke. They're trying to find Luke. They need to find Luke. They find Luke's lightsaber. Gotta find Luke. Uh, and then the most dramatic storyline in the entire film belongs to Han Solo, of course, which is his tension with Leia and with his own son, uh, who is the main villain of the film, uh, 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 um, what's his name? Uh, Kylo Ren. There is the entire like last half of the movie is just, you recognize that? You recognize you guys know this? Oh my God, you guys remember the blaster? Remember Han's blaster? Oh, they have two separate shots of Han shooting the Wookiee bowcaster and going, wow, I like this, oh. Oh, this is a cool gun, wow. It's just so silly. Like two, they put it in twice. There's a scene, oh my God, I have to talk about this. My, the worst part of this movie, by far, okay? The worst part is when, but before I tell you that, if you've been enjoying this uh, ranty review so far, smack that like button. Make sure that you are subscribed down below by pressing the subscribe button. And also, make sure you leave a comment at the end of this video with your thoughts, because I would love to hear what you all have to say about my Star Wars review here at the end. The Star Wars reviews have been very popular on the channel, and I would love to hear what you have to say. <laughs> so don't forget. Hey, Merrick, good to see you. And as I was going to say, returning back to it, the worst scene in the entire movie, hands down, the a a scene um, that uh, actually like it made me physically cringe. Okay, so let me set it up for you: Ray and Finn and R two D two and BB eight and Chewie and C three PO. They're all on the Millennium Falcon. Okay, and somebody goes. Uh, you mean the Jedi's? I thought that was just a bunch of made up gunk. And then, I kid you not, the camera locks on Han Solo's face, okay? 
And he looks at it, he goes, you know, I used to think that too. Hold on, let me see if I can reproduce this. Okay, I'm gonna try and reproduce this. You know, I used to think that too, but it's all real, all of it. Star Wars, the Jedi, the Force, lightsabers, the Millennium Falcon, AT-ATs, speeder bikes, Ewoks, it's all real. None of it's made up. And I'm not fucking kidding. I mean, obviously I'm being a little dramatic. He doesn't literally list every single thing that you can possibly imagine in the entire Star Wars series. But he, he literally just goes like, yeah, it's all, none of it's made up. It's all real, guys. You're, you didn't do it. And, and, and it is... It, he's smiling. It's so weird. It's so uncomfortable. It's so it's so uncomfortable and it's it seems like it, It's like it felt parasocial, okay? It felt like it was trying to reach through the audience and like jerk off a fan But I didn't want it. Okay. I was like no go away. I don't want this. No I just want to watch the movie. I don't want to I don't want you to tell me <laughs> yeah, Doe in chat says, it's real, and we want you to come to Disney World and feel how real it is for yourself. Come get your Disney weekend vacation package at www.disneyworld.com forward slash weekend package live. It is, woo, ooh boy, it's bad, okay? It was a shockingly uh, 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 uncomfortable and out of place scene. And I wish that it was just that scene, but unfortunately the entire rest of the movie with very few exceptions, um, basically just panders to fans of the original trilogy. To the degree, to the degree, I think they only mention the events of the prequel trilogy once in the entire movie, which is really, really weird. Um, given the fact that the prequels are actually really popular. I know that it's like fun, like people love to hate on the prequels. Obviously, I hated on the prequels a bunch, but they're really popular movies. And also basically everything that was in the prequels was also really popular. People loved the droids. People loved the, the designs of the clone troopers. They loved all the ships. They loved all the, the General Grievous. It's like, it, and they just, they don't, there's nothing. They bear, they make like one reference to the Clone Wars or something, and that's it. And I know that it's supposed to be chronologically way later, but not that far. It's like 40 years or something. They did not want any reference to the prequels. So instead, you just get a, a, a slurry of original trilogy references that are beyond painful, okay? It was... It was a lot. And unfortunately, it led to the film basically completely selling out its own uh, its own characters. Ray has basically no arc. Finn basically gets no arc. Uh, um, uh, Kylo Ren has no real arc. The only person who really gets an arc of any type is Han Solo. And it's not even that much. It's It's... Oh yeah, Poe gets forgotten and thrown to the wayside. Uh, none of the characters actually go anywhere. They just kind of appear and do things. Like, and, and, and it's so frustrating because the characters are good. The new characters are awesome. Kylo Ren is great, okay? I love the, the, the Kylo Ren bitch fits where he freaks the hell out and smashes everything and goes, arr, arr, arr. awesome. I love it. He's a great character. I love to see a a guy like an angsty teenager who can't control the force being like it's great. Um uh uh the, the Ray is a fun character. She she's a great actress. She's you know she, she's act, the acting is great. Uh um and she's fun. She doesn't have an arc though. Uh Finn also uh John Boyega does a great job. Um He's really good at acting. His his outfits look great. He has a cool setup. Doesn't go anywhere. Poe Dameron, great acting, uh, good lines, you know, uh, cool outfit, cool stuff. Doesn't go anywhere. 
none of the characters go anywhere because the entire movie is obsessed with showing off as much original trilogy nostalgia as possible, and it really sucks. Um, there is, however, one final thing that I must praise The Force Awakens for, okay? Actually, two things. The first one is what a lot of people are bringing up in chat right now, which is the chemistry between Finn and Poe. Poe Dameron and Finn absolutely have fantastic chemistry. Every single scene with them is, it's a little quippy, but it's very good. Um, and uh, as we all know, uh, it won't matter, but, but who cares? We're not gonna talk about the other movies yet. I'll get there when we get there. Uh, they do have very good chemistry and it shows, it's great. Um, and I love it, actually. I think it's one of the best parts of the movie is all of the scenes with Finn and Poe are very enjoyable, and I think they're great. Um, and the second thing that I have to praise, the last lightsaber battle. Um, the lightsaber battle between Rey and, uh, and Kylo Ren is, like, one of the best in the entire series. Um... I was actually so, I was, I was, it, it was so good um, to the degree that like e the amount of thought that went into it uh, really shows. I mentioned this earlier as to like a way to, to argue against the Mary Sue allegations against uh, Ray's character. Um, but it's actually, uh, uh, but it's actually, um, like, it's actually a good argument against the idea she's a Mary Sue. Um, they explicitly have um, Kylo Ren is like injured. He's like exhausted. He was just humiliated and he was injured. So he like, he had to kill his own father, which was a whole, was like an emotional thing. So he's like super exhausted and messed up in the head. He actually got physically injured before the fight. And, um, and so this, so he's going into the fight completely weakened. And even still, because Rey has had zero training with a lightsaber and has no idea what she's doing, uh, she's barely able to stay on even footing with him, even with him being as injured as he is. Like he's still, like his training allows him. So it creates this dynamic where it really shows that Rey actually has a really long way to go. Um, and... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Uncle Gumball points out he 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 like slams on his bl bl blaster wound to rile up his pain and rage. It was a nice touch. Yeah, there's a lot of nice touches in that fight. Um, it was a, a very carefully done fight, and the the choreography sells the idea that this is a totally mi like a uh, uh, mismatched battle, and that it's basically luck quote unquote, it's basically luck or the force that even allows Rey to get away from this situation alive because she has no skill. She fights incredibly clumsily and it's intentional uh, and obvious that that was, that, that attention was paid to that. Her fighting looks like hell and it's very desperate and there's a lot of tension in this fight. So I have to say like, it's one of the things I really, really like about The Force Awakens. It was a part where the movie actually started to have some character, um, which it desperately needed because most of the film is just, oh my God, the Millennium Falcon. Oh my God, they have stormtroopers. Oh, whoa. And uh, that sucks. That stuff sucks. Oh, it sucks, it sucks, it sucks. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, that's about all that there is for me to say about The Force Awakens. Uh, next stream, I will be reviewing The Last Jedi, uh, which is also an interesting film, and I have a lot to talk about with The Last Jedi as well. Uh, I actually liked The Force Awakens slightly more this this viewing than I did in my original viewing. I actually haven't watched The Force Awakens since it originally came out. It's been a long time since I last saw the film, and I actually like it more than I remembered. When I first saw it, I was so pissed off by the like, 
Star Wars original trilogy. It like drove me so crazy that I couldn't handle it. Um, but this time I found things that I liked more, uh, that I found were endearing and that shined through, uh, even though the, the annoying, uh, soy quotient was unbelievably high. Uh, not, I, I, I still wouldn't say that, um, oh, I should say one other thing, which is that I just like the prequel movies better than these, like a lot. Um, and I think it speaks to what I was saying in my prequel reviews. Um, excuse me, my prequel reviews were very, very uh, polarizing. Some people said, oh, Demon Mama, you're talking out your ass. This is bullshit. The, the prequels suck. There's a lot that sucks in the prequels, but the prequels don't feel like nostalgia slurry. Like at all. They're, they're, they're super creative. They're very different than the original trilogy. Uh, they go in a completely different direction um, to the degree that like, and if you watch the prequels and the sequels in close proximity, I think that it becomes much more apparent, which I have. I've watched all of these movies in the last like month and a half. Um, obviously nothing comp compares to the OG trilogy. Like that's just a given. Like the OG trilogies are so good, it's not even funny. Um, but the prequels were trying something original and that is not what was happening at all with The Force Awakens. Um, when I was watching The Force Awakens, I just kept going, I would literally ra rather be watching fa The Phantom Menace again, um, which is a pretty shocking thing. Uh, I will tell you, in my life, there has been previously zero occasions in which I have said, wow, I would rather be watching The Phantom Menace right now. I've never thought that thought in my life until my second watch through of The Force Awakens, at which point I was just like, hmm. Let's go watch Phantom Menace again. It was more fun. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I have to say now about the, the Force Awakens. It was okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't even good. It was just okay. There were aspects that I think were really good. And there were a lot of aspects that I feel were really terrible. Which results in a, a big ol' meh. meh is my reaction to The Force Awakens. Anyway, if you enjoyed this review... Don't forget to leave a comment below and hit subscribe. Uh, it would mean the world to me to have you uh, join me on my channel where I talk about politics, Star Wars, video games, everything. We talk about a ton of stuff from a lefty queer perspective. Thanks for watching.